This video will cover the basics of diabetes mellitus. Now for a quick little disclaimer, this video is intended for informative purposes only. Only a trained physician should diagnose and manage any disorder. Now let's explore the basics of diabetes. Diabetes has a wide range of symptoms. Two of the most obvious signs of diabetes early on in the disease process are going to be excessive thirst and excessive urination. These two symptoms tend to be obvious to family and friends of the diabetic individual. Another symptom more specific to type 1 diabetes is weight loss. It is always important to notice weight loss because unintentional weight loss may indicate a more serious disease such as diabetes, thyroid disorders, or cancers. There are some symptoms of diabetes that tend to show up later on in the disease process as well. Uh, one of the more important changes are going to be vision changes which can vary from blurry vision to permanent blindness. Diabetic vision disturbances tend to be very debilitating to an individual, uh, so a yearly check should be performed to prevent blindness. Another symptom that tends to show up after years of diabetes is going to be a generalized loss of sensation. It can happen anywhere in the body, but tends to be in the extremities and the peripheries, especially in the hands and the feet. Uh, this loss of touch and sensation can further cause problems like diabetic ulcers, and since the individual can't feel whether or not they have a wound. And lastly, individuals with diabetes can develop kidney problems um, and mental status changes. Short-term kidney problems can be minor, but longer-term kidney damage can cause terrible problems. Patients can also present at any stage of the diabetic process with mental status changes. Uh, this can range from confusion to tiredness or even comas. You may have heard people talk about the different types of diabetes. There are many different types, but by far the two most common types are going to be type 1 and type 2 diabetes. For the most part, type 1 and type 2 share similar symptoms, which we just covered. They also require the diabetic individual to monitor their blood glucose level to make sure that it is in the correct range. Although type 1 and type 2 diabetes are similar, they are also two distinct separate diseases. We will cover these differences in the upcoming slides and explain why it is important when treating diabetes. So now let's focus on type 1 diabetes. Type 1 is also referred to as insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. This is because people with type 1 always need to take insulin. We don't actually know why people develop type 1 diabetes. There is research out there that suggests type 1 is due to multiple factors such as genetics, the immune system, and environmental factors. So like I just said, genetic factors may play into the picture of type 1 diabetes. Children may receive genes from their parents that predispose them to getting diabetes. Another important player is going to be your immune system. The immune system can be tricked into thinking your insulin producing cells are foreign. This kills off those cells, which leads to an insulin deficiency. And then lastly, you've got environmental factors, which may also uh, lead to the development of type 1 diabetes. Certain viruses are thought to help develop type 1. Again, there is no definitive answer on why people develop type 1, but it is thought to be the interplay between these three factors. So now let's take a look at the basic physiology of type 1 diabetes. Uh, here we've got the liver, and then below we've got the intestine, and then we've got an organ between the two, and there's the arrow, and that's going to show where the pancreas is. So the arrow shows the pancreas, and within that pancreas there are going to be different cell types. One of those cell types are going to be called beta cells. Beta cells are important because they produce a hormone called insulin. We need to uh, go over the function of insulin later, but for now, just realize that insulin is typically present in the body. When someone has diabetes type 1, they lose their beta cells in the pancreas because the immune system kills them off. This leads to an insulin deficiency, so individuals with type 1 diabetes will not have insulin, they'll need to get their insulin from injections for the rest of their life. So that was type 1 diabetes. Now let's move on to type 2 diabetes. This is also known as non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Like type 1, uh, the cause of type 2 isn't quite known. Um, there are some important observations, however. Individuals that develop type 2 diabetes tend to be more overweight for their height or have a higher BMI. They may also present with metabolic syndrome which is just going to be bad cholesterol, bad triglycerides, HDL levels, and LDL levels. Race also plays a factor in type 2 diabetes, with African Americans and Hispanics seemingly getting more uh, type 2 diabetes more often than white people. 
Also, genetics and environmental factors uh, play their role. So now let's move on to the physiology. I have a question here. Um, is there insulin in a type 2 diabetic? And I'll give you the answer. Um, actually, it's a trick question, yes and no. So why is that? So initially, early on in the disease, there's going to be plenty of insulin, uh, sometimes even excessive amounts. Well, why is this? Uh, it's thought because type 2 diabetes, people become resistant to their insulin that they produce. So their body will produce more and more insulin to make up for this resistance. Eventually, later on in the disease process, these beta cells that produce the insulin uh, within that pancreas are going to get tired from making all the insulin, and uh, they'll eventually die off from getting overworked. So initially, we have insulin production, and then later on, um, you're going to have reduced to no insulin um, as the disease becomes chronic. So yes and no. Um, hopefully everything is making sense up to this point. Type 1, the body doesn't produce insulin, while type 2, the body has resistance. Um, I promised I would quickly talk about insulin. I simplified the role of insulin down to its basic roots, and it simply puts sugar from the bloodstream into the body's cells. So here's a quick animation emphasizing this. Um, here's the patient giving themselves insulin, which is going to cause sugars or glucose that's typically present in the bloodstream to go into the cell. So don't forget that last slide. The role of insulin plays an important role in some complications of diabetes. So now let's take a look at the first complication. Hyperglycemia is just a fancy word that means too much sugar in the blood. And specifically that sugar is going to be glucose. So glucose is the sugar that is typically found in the bloodstream. There is always a little sugar in the blood and sugar levels go up after meals. So after a meal, the body will typically release a bunch of insulin from the pancreas, which puts all this free glucose sugar into the cells, so it's not in the bloodstream. If you don't release that insulin, high levels can cause damage to the arteries. Uh, this will lead to organ damage, heart attacks, stroke, amputations, and a bunch of other problems. Another complication is going to be hypoglycemia. This is going to be opposite of hyperglycemia. In hypoglycemia, there's not enough sugar in the blood. This is typically caused by too much insulin that gets injected into the bloodstream, which causes uh, the blood sugar to go into the cell. So some of the symptoms here uh, are going to be mental status changes like confusion and coma, increased heart rate, tremors, and then shakes. Then lastly, we have a complication known as diabetic ketoacidosis. And this is typically seen more in type 1 diabetics, but it can also happen in type 2 as well. And in DKA, it's simply where the body starts to break down fat for energy instead of using the sugars. This is going to produce acid in the bloodstream. If you get too much acid produced, diabetics can have breathing problems, pain, nausea, and other symptoms. The next few slides are going to be for informative purposes only. Uh, the diagnosis and treatment of diabetes should be managed by a trained physician only. So diabetes is going to be typically found uh, by clinical symptoms. So if a patient comes in with the risk factors for diabetes and with a lot of presenting symptoms of diabetes, further testing can be done. And so what are some of those tests? Um, the two most important blood tests are going to be the diagnosing your high blood glucose levels. Uh, blood sugar levels are measured multiple times, and also another thing called HbA1c levels are measured. Once diagnosed, patients will need to monitor their blood sugar levels often. This is done with the blood glucose meter, which pricks the finger to get a small amount of blood to test. It is important to follow the instructions set forth by your doctor. A normal blood glucose level in a healthy individual will range from 70 to 100 milligrams of glucose per deciliter. There are many different ways to manage diabetes. There is no cure for diabetes. So the management may be a little tricky. Uh, we'll go over some of the very basics. Um, in type 1 diabetes, the rule is you absolutely need insulin since individuals can't make their own. There are a variety of different types of insulins, and some that are fast acting, some that are slower acting. Uh, different regimens may combine the different types depending on the doctor's findings. Lifestyle modifications are recommended for all diabetic patients. It is especially important for type 2 diabetics 
since their lifestyle may have led to the diabetes in the first place. It is important to eat healthy foods and to eat consistently throughout the day. Also, the American Diabetes Association recommends 150 or more hours of aerobic exercise a week. Finally, it is recommended to maintain your weight or to lose up to 7% of your body weight if you are overweight. I'm not going to go over the other treatments, but I just wanted to emphasize that there are a variety of other treatments out there for, available for diabetic individuals. If you found this video helpful, please click like down below. You can also subscribe for more great videos that we make. Um, I hope you found this brief explanation of diabetes useful. Here are my references for my slides. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm not going to go over the other treatments, but I just wanted to emphasize that there are a variety of other treatments out there for, available for diabetic individuals. If you found this video helpful, please click like down below. You can also subscribe for more great videos that we make. Um, I hope you found this brief explanation of diabetes useful. Here are my references for my slides. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.